exceeding weary. It's come to that. I thought weariness durst not have attached to one of so high blood. Shall I tell thee one thing, Poins? Yes, well, faith, and let it be an excellent good thing. Mary, I tell thee it is not meet that I should be so sad now my father is sick. Albeit I could tell thee, as to one it pleases me for fault of a better to call my friend, I could be sad. And sad indeed, too. I hardly upon such a subject. Why, this hand, thou thinks me as far in the devil's book as thou, and Falstaff. Let the end try the man. But I tell thee, my heart bleeds inwardly that my father is so sick, and keeping such vile company as thou art hath in reason kept me from all ostentation of sorrow. The reason? What wouldst thou think of me if I should weep? I should think thee a most princely hypocrite. It would be every man's thought. And thou art a blessed fellow to think as every man thinks. Every man would think me a hypocrite indeed. And what excites your most worshipful thought to think so? Why, because you've been so lewd, so much engrafted to false stuff. And to thee. Oh, blow Jack! What hell? Oh, no, Quilt. I know, Mad Wag. Oh, my good Lord of Lancaster, I cry mercy. But tell me, Jack, whose fellows are these that come after? I know. I, I never did see such pitiful work. Oh, stop, stop, stop. Good luck to toss. Food for powder. Food for powder. Oh, they fill a pit as well as better. Mortal man. Mortal man. How bloodily the sun begins to peer above yon bulky hill. Day looks pale at his distemperature. The southern wind hath played a trumpet to his purposes, and by his hollow whistling in the leaves foretells a tempest and a blustering day. Then with the losers, let it sympathize, for nothing can seem foul to those that win. How oh, now, my lord of Worcester? It is not well that you and I should meet upon such terms as now we meet. You have deceived our trust and made us doff our easy robes of peace to crush our old limbs in ungentle steel. This is not well, my lord, this is not well. Hear me, my liege. For my own part, I could be well content to entertain the lag end of my life with quiet hours, but I protest I have not sought the day of this dislike. Ah, you have not sought it. How comes it then? Rebellion ran his way and he found it. Peace to it. Peace. In both your armies there is many a soul shall pay full dearly for this encounter if once they join in trial. Tell your nephew, the Prince of Wales doth join with all the world in praise of Harry Percy. By my hopes this present enterprise set off his head, I do not think a braver gentleman. More active, valiant, or more valiant, young, more daring, or more bold is now alive to grace this latter age with noble deeds. For my part, I may speak it to my shame, I have a truant been to chivalry, and so I hear he doth account me too, yet this before my father's majesty. I am content that he shall take the odds of his great name and estimation, and will, to save the blood on either side, try fortune with him in a single fight. And Prince of Wales, so dare we venture the albeit considerations infinite do make against it. No, good Worcester, no. We love our people, well, even those we love that are misled upon your nephew's part. And will they take the offer of our grace? Both he and they and you, yea, every man shall be my friend again and I'll be his. So tell your nephew and bring me word what he will do. But if he will not yield, rebuke. And dread correction wait on us, and they shall do their office, so be gone. We will not now be troubled with reply. We offer fair. Take it advisedly. It will not be accepted on my life. Hence, therefore, every leader to his charge. For on their answer will we set on them, and God befriend us as our cause is just. How? If they see me down in the battle, describe me so. 
Tis a point of friendship. Nothing but a colossus can do thee that friendship. Say thy prayers and farewell. I would to a bedtime hour. And oh well. Why? Thou owest God a death. Tis not you yet. I'd be loath to pay before his day. What need I be so forward with him that calls not on me? <laughs> Still, honor pricks me on. <laughs> Withdraw thyself, I bleed too much. Lord John of Lancaster, go down. Not I, my lord, unless I did bleed too. May God forbid a shallow scratch to drive the Prince of Wales from such a field as this, where stained nobility lies trodden on and rebels' arms triumph in massacres. We breathe too long. Come, cousin Warwick, our duty this way lies. For God's sake, come! By God, thou hast deceived me, Lancaster. I did not think thee lord of such a spirit. Before I loved thee as a brother, John, but now I do respect thee as my soul. I saw him hold the young Hotspur at the point with lustier maintenance than I did look for of such an ungrown warrior. Oh, this boy lends metal to us all. Who oh, comes oh, here? What? Standest thou idle here? Lend me thy sword. And yet the old man lies stark and stiff under the hooves of vaunting enemies whose deaths are yet unrevenged. I prithee, lend me thy sword. I prithee, let me rest a while. I pig Percy. Make him chore. He is indeed and living to kill thee. I prithee, lend me thy sword. Lord, hell, the hot be alive against my sword. Take my pistol if they will take. Give it me. What is it in a case? <laughs> it is hot. It is hot. <laughs> There's that Wasaka City. What? <laughs> is it time to jest and dally now? <laughs> if Percy be alive, I'll pierce him. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. If I mistake not, thou art Harry Monmouth. Thou speakst as if I would deny my name. My name is Harry Percy. Why then, I see a very valiant rebel of that name. I am the Prince of Wales, and think not, Percy, to share with me in glory any more. Two stars keep not their motion in one sphere, nor can one England brook a double reign of Harry Percy and the Prince of Wales. Oh, shall it, Harry? For the time has come to end the one of us. And would to God thy name in arms were now as great as mine. I'll make it greater ere I part from thee. And all the budding honors on thy crest I'll crop to make a garland for my head. I can no longer brook thy vanities. <laughs> I'd better brook the loss of brutal life and this proud title fair as well. I may wound my thoughts worse than my sword, my flesh. Ah, but 
thoughts, the slaves of life and light. Time's fool and time that takes survey of all the worlds must ever stop. that the earthy and cold hand of death lies on my tongue. No, Percy, <coughs> thou art dust and food for... For worms, brave Percy. Fare thee well, great heart. Till we've ambition, how much art thou shrunk? And that this body did contain a spirit, a kingdom, for it was too small a bound, but now two paces of the vilest earth is room enough. This earth that bears thee dead bears not alive, so stout a gentleman. Not all this flesh keeping a little life. Poor Jack, farewell. I could have better spared a better man. Oh, I should have a heavy miss of thee if I were much in love with vanity. Death hath not struck so fat a deer today, though many dearer in this bloody fray. And bow that I see thee by and by. Till then, in blood, my noble Percy lies. Come, brother John. Full bravely has thou fleshed thy maiden sword. So, who are we here? Is yeah. that sorry, this fat man yeah. was dead. I did. I saw him dead, breathless and bleeding on the ground. Art thou alive? Or is it fantasy that plays upon our eyesight? I prithee speak, we will not trust our eyes without our ears. Thou art not what thou seest. Nay, that's certain. I am not a double man. But if I be not Jack Falstaff, I am a jack. Yes, Percy. If your father would do me the honor, so if not, let him kill the next Percy himself. So, I look to be either Earl or Duke, I can assure you. Why, Percy, I killed myself and saw thee dead. Catch thou! Cha! Lord, Lord, how this world is given to lying. I grant you, I was down and out of breath, and so was he. But we rose, both, in an instant, and fought a long hour by Shaftesbury clock. Ah. Ah. I take it upon my death. I gave him this wound in the thigh. And if the man were alive and would deny it, I'd make him eat a piece of my soul. Well, this is the strangest tale I've ever heard. This is the strangest fellow, Brother John. Come, bring your luggage nobly on your back. For my part, if a lie may do thee grace, I'll gild it with the happiest terms I have. The trumpet sounds retreat. The day is ours. Come, brother, let us to the highest of the field and see what friends are living. Who are dead? Thus ever did rebellion find rebuke. Ill-spirited Worcester. Did we not send grace, pardon, in terms of love to all of you? And wouldst thou turn our offers contrary, misuse the tenor of thy kinsman's trusts? Three knights upon our party, slain today, a noble earl and many a creature else, had been alive this hour, if like a Christian thou hadst truly borne betwixt our army's true intelligence. What I have done, my safety urged me to, and I embrace this fortune patiently. For though we, we here fall down, we have supplies shall second our attempt. If they miscarry, theirs shall second them. And so success of mischief shall be born, and heir from heir shall hold this quarrel up, whilst England shall have generation. 
You're too shallow, Worcester. Much too shallow to sound the bottom of the after times. There, Worcester to the death. Dan Vernon, too. Other offenders we will pause upon. I should rejoice now at this happy day. Now my sight fails and my brain is giddy. Umi, come near me now. I'm much ill. Come with your majesty. Oh, my royal father. Be patient, princes. You don't know these fits are with his highness. Very ordinary. Stand from him. Give him air. He'll straight be well. I pray you, take me up and bear me hands. And then dispatch me to all the court, my lords. Let there be no noise made, my gentle friends, unless some dull and favorable hand will whisper music to my weary spirit. Call for the music in the other room. Set me the crown upon my pillow here. His eye is hollow and he changes much. How doth the king? Exceeding ill. Not so much noise, my lord. Sweet prince, speak low. The king, your father, is disposed to sleep. Let us withdraw into the other room. Will it please your grace to go along with us? No, I will sit and watch here by the king. Why doth the crown lie there upon his pillow, being so troublesome a bedfellow? Oh, polished perturbation, golden care that keeps the ports of slumber open wide to many a watchful night. Sleep with it now. Yet not so sound and half so deeply sweet as he whose brow with homely biggin bound snores out the watch of night. O oh, majesty, when thou dost pinch thy bearer, thou dost sit like a rich armor worn in heat of day that scorched with safety. By his gates of breath there lies a downy feather which stirs not. Did he suspire that light and weightless down perforce must move? My gracious lord! Sleep is sound indeed. This is a sleep that from this golden wriggle hath divorced so many English kings. Thy due from me is tears and heavy sorrows of the blood, which nature, love, and filial tenderness shall, O oh dear father, pay thee plenteously. My due from thee is this imperial crown, which as immediate from thy place and blood derives itself to me. Why did you leave me here alone, my lord? We left the prince, my brother, here, my liege. Where is the crown? Who took it from my pillow? When we withdrew, my liege, we left it here. The prince had said, go seek him out. Is he so hasty that he doesn't suppose my sleep, my death? Lo, when he comes, come hither to me, Harry, depart the chamber, leave us here alone. I never thought to hear you speak again. I wish was father, Harry, to that thought. Thou hidest a thousand daggers in thy thoughts, which thou hast wetted on thy stony heart to stab at half an hour of my life. What canst thou not forbear me half an hour? Then get thee gone and dig my grave thyself and bid the merry bells ring to thine ears. Harry the fifth is crowned. Up, vanity! Down, royal state, all you sage counsellors, hence! And to the English court assemble now from every region, apes of idleness. Now, neighbor confines, purge you of your scum. Have you a ruffian who will swear, drink, dance, revel the night, rob, murder, commit the oldest sins, the newest kinds of ways? Be happy. He will trouble you no more. England shall give him office, honor. Might for the fifth 
carry from curved license blocks the muzzle of restraint and the wild dog shall flesh his tooth on every innocence. Ah, my poor kingdom, sick with civil blows. Oh, thou wilt be a wilderness again, peopled with wolves, thy old inhabit. Oh, pardon me, my liege. There is your crown. And he that wears the crown immortally long guard it yours. But when I here came in and found no cause of breath within your majesty, how cold it struck my heart. Coming to look on you, thinking you dead and dead almost, my liege, to think you were, I spake unto this crown as having sense, and thus upbraided it. The care on thee depending hath fed upon the body of my father. Therefore thou best of gold art worse than gold. Accusing it. I put it on my head to try with it, as with an enemy that hath before my face murdered my father. God put it in thy mind to take it hence that thou mightst win the more thy father's love, pleading so wisely in excuse of it. Come, sit thou by my side and here, I think, the latest counsel that ever I shall be. God knows, my son, by what by paths and indirect crooked ways I met this crown. And I myself know well how troublesome it is that upon my head to be. It shall descend. Better quiet. Better opinion. Better confirmation. For all the soil of the achievement goes with me into the earth. How I came by the crown, oh God, forgive and grant. It may with thee in true peace live. You won it. Wore it, kept it, gave it me. Then plain and right must my possession be, which I with more than with a common pain against all the world will rightfully maintain. 